can just quickly remedy that. Also, my lights aren't working quite properly, so the quality of the lighting is going to be a little bit weird. Um, I hope I fix that before making my land video later. But yes. Okay. So, how's everyone going today? I hope I hope you guys are having a good one. There is a lot happening in Alluvium right now, and we have pre-registration opening for the test net in just a matter of days. The test net registrations will be open before our next episode of the download, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, I'll be able to give away plenty of spots to these, these in the community. Um, I don't know how exactly everything is going to work quite yet, but in my mind, I'm going to prioritize two key things. YouTube, you guys have been here for the longest, and Wildfire as much as I possibly can, which is my heart and soul, my family uh, in Web3 and in Alluvium in general. So definitely prioritizing those two when it comes to giving away spots myself. Um, but again, I don't know exactly the systems that are going to happen, and I fear I might not actually have that much control over it. So there's going to be a lot happening. How's it going, Surf? How's it going, Mel? Um, we'll jump into it in just a minute. We'll give a people a few minutes to settle in, ask some questions, whatever. Samsung partnership is really, really cool. Uh, maybe we'll have a look at Games Hub today. Games Hub, Samsung. There we go. We will have a look at that today, I think. Um, I'm looking forward to finishing my land video. I'd almost finished by the time I jumped on here. So uh, i got to finish up that spreadsheet and get to it. Really looking forward to that. But yeah, it's uh, going to be a good episode. Going to be short and sweet. Nothing too crazy. I'm recording some really fun stuff today. So I'm looking forward to getting to that. I've also got to finish editing a an Olivia music video thing I've made. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to share that with everyone as well. That one's super fun. All right. So let's jump into it. Here we go. First up, we've got um, Nick talking about how Although not immediately we have the details of the Samsung partnership and what exactly it means for Alluvium and Samsung, in the next few days it will be revealed. Kieran has also said elsewhere that he's discussed how Samsung will be doing their own press release with the more elaborate details in the future. And we've even seen Wild Wilder World announce a partnership with Samsung as well. So the Samsung partnership is really interesting and there's more information to come. How's it going, Hamster? How's it going, Raphael? Hi from uh, Australia. Great to see you're in France. I hope you can understand me okay. If you want me to speak a little bit slower, let me know. Although I'm quite a fast speaker. Although maybe that's a little bit payback. When I was living in Italy, that didn't slow down for me. So... Um, that is what it is. All right, the next one we've got here is that the partnership with Samsung is open-ended. Now, this is very important. The initial phases include Alluvium being available in homes globally via smart TVs. I don't know exactly how they're going to integrate this, but this sounds pretty concrete as far as I can tell. But there is scope for things like cloud gaming, VR, and everything else. So that's very exciting. Um, I don't think, I think VR still got a ways to go before it fully takes off. Um, but as for Samsung phones, those sorts of integrations would be super cool to see in the future at the very least. Uh, but there are lots of different things I would love to see from the partnership. The next one we've got is that the airdrop will still be active and available to landholders. They will have the opportunity to participate. And the airdrop, airdrop itself is complex and caters to many different cohorts. I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. Whoops. It caters to many cohorts. Now, what does this mean? Alluvium is really hard to grasp just how many... You practice English with my channel. I really appreciate it. It's really hard to grasp just how many different stakeholders there are on Alluvium. Probably more than pretty much any other Web3 game, not than some studios. For example, Gala Games has 10, 15 games under their, under their umbrella. And Star Atlas, I think, is maybe the closest with quite a few different kind of operations happening at the same time. But Alluvium has so many people. It has people who love Alluvium Beyond, people who play a lot of Alluvium Zero, People who own land, own Alluvatars, own other promo collections, um, other things in the world. People who love Arena, who love the different game modes in Arena, whether it be survival or otherwise. People who love playing Overworld. Um, there's, and people who stake the token, people who just hold the token. There's probably seven or eight at least key stakeholders in Alluvium. And so the airdrop needs to cater to all of them. I don't know exactly how Alluvium is going to go about pulling this off. I hope it's interesting. 
But either way, it's going to be great to see them try and encompass all of these different people because they've been with Alluvium for a very, very long time. And yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Ah, crap. I just closed something. Hold on. Let me bring it back. All right. Here we go. All right. So the next thing I've got for you here is from Johnny at Alluvium. The Zero team is smaller because you need 40 artists and tech artists to do the AAA overworld type stuff. Thank you to all of those that have been doing that. Um, and plus an expensive render farm to do the Zero stuff. Dev teams are around the same size. That I did not realize. So even though it doesn't seem like we see all that much stuff from Zero dev side and stuff like that, we'll talk about that in just a minute because I know that's a big discussion point at the moment. We need to know that the dev teams are the same size across, I would assume, all three games, maybe slightly bigger in Arena. Um, and so a lot of the back end and code and that sort of stuff could take a little while to do. Now, I don't understand the game dev pipeline particularly well in general. It's hard to say if there's bottlenecks. Like, even if you have 50 devs, there isn't 50 tasks for them to do. And so it doesn't necessarily make much sense. So I figured... The more games you have, you probably have similar amount of devs on each game because I suspect there's a bit of a too many cooks in the kitchen type thing when it comes to these sorts of when it comes to game development in general. Um, I've got a DM from Taron. I should probably look at that. I don't know if he's around. Uh, I'm going to send him the thing just in case he's able to join. I don't think he is, though. I think that's a different part of the conversation. Anyways, the next thing we've got for you here is a response from Aaron to something EGS has said, which I think is quite interesting. So his other piece of feedback was that there wasn't a way of knowing how much XP had gone up after each battle, other than going into your alluvial inventory to have a look. Not sure if it's already been addressed, but a little animation showing the XP growth. This is one thing that did bug me when I tried out the overall private beta 3. Um, so I'm glad that this is being addressed. But more what this says to me is that they know that a lot of these quality of life things aren't in the game yet. And they are going to be adding them. Maybe not all of them make it in for open beta. But hopefully they'll just add them over time, which is fine. So regarding all of these discussions surrounding uh, the Alluvium Zero delay compensation. Kieran has said that ILV investors have been waiting for two years for RevDiz. Landholders haven't lost that revenue. It's just delay. Uh, it's a bad situation, but it doesn't mean the Dow owes them a full return on investment immediately, which is very important. I know a lot of people are trying to get their R&I on all their NFTs and their collection, and that's that really sucks. But no one owes them a return on investment, which also sucks. Um, but it is Alluvium's job to do the best they can to provide the value they promised to those landholders. Then the value isn't, we're going to give you a million dollars. The value is, we promised you would have a game to play, and it's based on these tokenomics. And the game has been delayed, and that it sucked for pretty much everyone, um, landholders in particular. Um, but Kieran also says that he gets that ILV has staking rewards, Alluvium Beyond has leaderboard rewards, and that is why we will make them whole with the airdrop. They're talking a lot about how the ILV airdrop, he's going to try and, I've got this a little bit later as well. He's going to try and kind of catch up land to people like Alluvium Beyond and stuff like that as that felt a bit neglected. Um, I don't really have an opinion either way on whether they have or not, but it's certain that in terms of general leaks, land probably gets the least, um, or at least the least public facing stuff. They actually have some decent stuff said in the Discord from time to time and stuff like that. But the leak highlight reels haven't had any land details. Quite a bit of arena, quite a bit of overworld, uh, lots of cosmetics and other things. And Alluvium Beyond has had lots of leaks in the past. But land, don't get a whole lot of leaks. <laughs> Doesn't get much. That's, that's what I'm most bummed about. <laughs> but it is what it is. Okay. Uh, so... As for this IIP that Kieran's thinking of making, Johnny and Aaron seem to have both agreed on it, uh, and they want as a team for the landholders to be happy. They obviously acknowledge that that's going to be an impossible task. Not everyone can be happy. Um, but if the Dow votes accordingly, then they can do it. 
They also think it's fair that we build into the airdrop the additional ILV rewards that Beyond has received as a bonus to landholders. Again, it wasn't that we didn't want to incentivize zero players. We couldn't do it fairly. This makes them whole. I think that's worth noting, and it's something that people have forgotten, is that Alluvium Zero was actually client, not client side. I don't know what the word is, but it was on the side of the device. And what that meant is, even if you rewarded them for the past two years or whatever, it would be, I don't want to say easy, but it would be very doable for someone to hack and cheat the system and for it to go undetected because of the way the game was set up. And they've been fixing all of this for the past two years. So if they did do something like that, then it would be bad. It lets it would be bad. <laughs> it would be easy to cheat, or at least somewhat cheat on like T1s and stuff. Um, and Kieran feels like he's been negotiating with a union and perhaps something in the future to add to the governance model. So the voices of landholders can be heard through an official channel. I don't know how I feel about adding land to, to a governance channel. I think it's a really great idea to add the voice of landholders to governance. But that being said, I feel like landholders elect in people they feel represent them. I feel like Najaf has fit that role quite well in particular for the past, uh, the past two epochs. Landholders felt like he represented the landholder community quite well. And so they elected him in. And I think that's a great way to look at our current governance system. So I don't know if it needs to change. Uh, but I do like the idea of all three games having some sort of weird democratically appointed liaison that talks on behalf of those communities uh, frequently for them. Uh, not just land, but all three. And that could be really cool. All well, four with Living Beyond. That could be really cool. Client side versus server side. Yeah, so I was right. Client side. Sorry, I thought client side was server side for a second. That's why I got all confused. All right. Thanks for the assistant there. Um, so this one's also quite interesting. So Dr. Spoon has suggested, here we go. Dr. Spoon has suggested holding revenue back and distributing it to IZ when live based on weekly fuel sales. I really like this. So it would be neat if both is possible. So I don't have to push the idea forward uh, recent shares. And someone did respond to this. Kieran said, that's the solution. Aaron agrees we can do it. Waiting to hear back from Johnny. So for anyone who doesn't quite understand that, if there's a big if Kieran's confident it will come out, but I mean, I'm not going to put any weight on anything anyone says in general. Um, hopefully it comes out. It should come out. But if it doesn't, then this is what they think of doing. Basically, all of the 5% of in-game revenue that would be distributed to landholders gets held. It gets held back, held in a vault of some kind. What happens is then when Illusion Zero does release, say I'm generating 100 Solon and someone else is generating 10, that held back revenue is going to be distrib distributed in that proportion. I'm going to get 10 times more than that other person, which is a really good way to approach this entire situation. Hey, Suzel, how's it going? Um, and yeah, so I think that would be a really neat solution. The only problem is that if fuel fluctuates and stuff like that, there's all sorts of opportunity costs you miss out on, but I don't think it's such a bad, such a bad thing. Uh, my camera always feels off center and it bugs the crap out of me. All right. The next one I've got here is Alluvium Zero is a completely separate team to Overworld and Arena. So no um, things like developing and these sorts of stuff wouldn't delay the launch of the game. They decided to rebuild it from scratch a year ago because it needed a ton of work. Hopefully that's worth it. I don't want to speak on the behalf of game development. Um, and the only thing they've added, we have added, is making it free to play, which I think will be a net positive for landholders in the future. I don't agree with that personally, but I can see where they're coming from and it might be a net positive for landholders. Sure, whatever. Um, getting more players in and maybe a lot of them enjoy it and want to get more involved with the overall Alluvium ecosystem. I don't see that as the same thing as them getting more involved with Alluvium land and buying land, but it is what it is. Um, and yeah, all right. So let me close some of these pages. All right, so next up we've got uh, is that fuel has already been audited. I really like pointing this sort of stuff out because this is stuff that's easy to miss. What's up, Marcelo? So the contracts have to get audited before they go live. And it sounds like fuel has already been audited. I would like to assume that that is the largest and most important contract in the entire Illuvium ecosystem. So knowing that the smart contract is done and ready to go for a mutable, obvious since testnet's coming out soon, 
means that there shouldn't be too many blockers before things like open beta. And it really is just testing the game, making sure it all runs smooth and okay, and there's nothing too broken. And then we jump into the fun stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. If you're looking forward to Alluvium coming out, drop a W in the chat, drop a W in the comments if you're watching this after. I'm so excited for the open beta of Alluvium. I know a lot of people in this chat are going to be playing it, except Sjard. Sjard won't be playing it, and that is okay. All right, so next up, we've got Kieran saying that he is the CEO of Alluvium Labs, not the DAO. He can't make a written statement like the land holder should have been robbed, and we're going to give the compensation. Similarly, he can't also say we're going to delay the launch until IZ is ready. All of these things require IIPs, and which is what part of this process is. The problem is that um, these feedback things actually got mostly down votes. So it's going to be a little bit hard to get them through proposals, but if someone makes something a bit more coherent. I'm sure it could be. Um, and he's saying that it might be a delay. He's confident it will come out again. I got no idea. Um, and here is the most interesting part here. You have received a fuel airdrop. You will receive another fuel airdrop. Anyone considering buying more land after that? <laughs> That's $2 million in value. You will receive a portion of the major airdrop, and we are looking at ways to include mega cities if there is a delay. I thought mega cities were already going to be included, um, but maybe mega cities are going to be involved with the major airdrop. I have no idea. I don't want to. I don't want to guess on that. And now we have a leak. We don't have leaks too often, so I, I'm really trolling hard to find them. Um, we get one a month now. That's like an insane leak, but obviously I do the download every week. But this one's really cute. Why does the water on the water at Timber look so janky? Look at that! Oh, it's not too bad. It does look a little bit weird, but it's not too bad. <laughs> all right, all right. The next one that we're going to talk about is the town hall. There is a town hall starting up on Tuesday, 10 a.m. in Australian time. I think in the U.S. that's probably a Monday night or a Monday afternoon, like a Monday 3, 4 p.m. or something like that. Um, in Europe, I think it's a Monday night. So that's when the town hall is. It's for Kieran and Aaron. They're probably going to do lots of land chat and other chat. It's also the day after pre-registration should start. So there's going to be a lots of questions that are getting asked and a lot of really important answers. Don't make, make sure not to miss that. The other thing is maybe they'll give out access to some people or give the private beta registration to some people at this town hall. Um, but I'm going to be trying making content on this, summarizing it, threads, all the rest of it. So don't forget to follow my Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe here. Um, I really appreciate all of you. Let's jump into the next one. Okay. Alluvium and Samsung. If we scroll down a bit, we can see the skins here. I think they're really cool. Um, but I mean, I don't care about them that much. All right. The other thing is this shot here of the Ranger is actually pulled from the cinematic trailer that is coming out before the launch of Alluvium. I think it's a really nice shot. The way the lighting is, all the new graphics and textures and things that we haven't quite seen before. It's a close-up shot. It looks great. I'm looking forward to it. Alluvium and Samsung, what does that What does that mean? And that is a good question. The closest thing we have to kind of understanding this is that Samsung has something called a gaming hub. From 2023 or newer smart TVs, you can play games directly from the smart TV itself. It's unclear to me if this is using uh, cloud gaming. I'm assuming it is. But from what I saw, they didn't really uh, mention it. But I'd have to assume if it can run things like Starfield, there's no way it is using, <laughs> it is using the hardware in a smart TV. If that is the case then console manufacturers are way behind. <laughs> uh, but it sounds like a connection thing. It sounds like it's doing uh, cloud gaming, that sort of stuff. 
looks really, really cool. I'm really excited. I saw some videos on people playing things like Fortnite on their smart TVs. It looked fine from the outside. I mean, I don't know what the experience is like actually playing it. Obviously, the latency and stuff, you'll only really feel when you're playing in the game and all the rest of it. But I think it's going to be really uh, going to be really cool. I think playing Alluvium on a Samsung TV is going to be sick. People are constantly annoyed by how hard it is to play the Overworld with controller right now because you can't play the Auto Battler with controller, or at least you'd have great difficulty. But know that they're removing the Auto Battler, and hopefully relatively soon, let's say before the end of the year, which would mean that since there'd be alluvial combat in the Overworld, everything else in the Overworld, it's pretty much set up for controller. It should actually be a pretty great controller game. When it goes to multiplayer, obviously PC and keyboard, uh, mouse and keyboard come back a little bit. But it, it will actually play really well on a controller, and I think that's exciting. The other big thing is payment on rails. This sort of thing doesn't work unless it's easy to get out a credit card and do an in-app transaction. And I can do that on my phone super easily. That's what I'm imagining. If they can pull that off inside the Samsung TV, then it could be a really big deal for Alluvium. Um, that being said, there probably aren't that many Samsung smart TVs out there in the ether right now. Uh, but this is kind of the equivalent to launching on something like Xbox, right? I, I like the idea of launching on a console equivalent for those that like that sort of stuff. And the game, like, don't forget, these a lot of these t smart TVs are like 2K, 4K resolution. That's the other benefit, is you won't have to pay a pretty penny to get a 4K experience in Alluvium, which will be super cool. Super, super cool. It would be the one reason I get this is for that 4K experience. Cloud gaming, yes, who's for the win? There's another Web3 project included in this Samsung thing. Yes, while the world has also partnered, also with very limited information, so I'm not really going to talk about it yet. I'm thinking about making a video, though. Uh, this is wild speculation. It is wild speculation, but uh, Kieran and Nick have both said that it will be on Samsung smart TVs. How it's integrated is hard to say, but it would be hard to assume that it's anything but this Games Hub thing. Um, I can't imagine another way it would go on a Samsung smart TVs otherwise, unless they're trying to hint at something like a Netflix series. But even then, that wouldn't make much sense with Samsung. So I think this is a fair, fair judgment to make. Also, uh, Alluvium handed out its next lot of creator rewards. I came fourth in engagement. I think I've been top five every single week, so I'm doing really well. I appreciate all you guys for coming out and supporting me all the time. I got top 10 yet again for most viewed, um, and I didn't get most new users or selected streamers, of course. I haven't really been shilling my link too much. i rather stick with the other stuff, really focus on quality content, getting that engagement um, from people who appreciate my content and learn something new. So that's always great. The next thing is I made a thread going over just what I discussed in the Samsung partnership. Uh, 17,000 impressions. I was really happy with this one. It does a really good job breaking it down. It breaks down some of the other airdrops in the surrounding ecosystems and how Alluvium's airdrop might compare as well. And I discuss how Alluvium breaks the silence that we're going to be doing at, at current value at some points. The airdrop I'm talking about is uh, a massive 25 million plus drop that we're going to be doing at, at current value. Uh, touch wood, that doesn't change when this gets published. But but uh, but yeah, a very, very large amount of, of money in this airdrop that drop points. Obviously, it's subject to change, but he's looking at a $25 million airdrop. Now, to be clear, we don't know what quantity of tokens this is. I'd like to assume he's talking about 25% of the pool, which um, at a $100 price would be $25 million. At $120, $130 price, you're getting closer to $30 million. Otherwise, he's talking of a fifth of the pool, which is probably currently $25 million at $130 uh, token price. So hard to say exactly how much, uh, but 20 to 25% seems like the safe assumption. Based on this, obviously, it's subject to change. The next thing we've got is some key community discussions. We've talked about them at length during this episode, so I won't go too crazy. But the first uh, the first one I've got is from Jagonite, where he's talking about compensation for landholders. More revdis for landholders, 10% of revdis instead of 5%. Speedups airdrop and elements airdrop. Now, I don't really love these. The time it takes to build up your land is a core tenant of making the game 
fun. I know not everyone will agree with that, but for me, the fact that it takes a long time to do and it's done slowly and it slowly progresses over time is a big selling point for me when it comes to playing these sorts of games. So speeding all that up might actually feel a little bit awkward. Um, if it's done conservatively, it's not so bad. And more revved is for landowners is interesting. I don't mind it as a catch-up. So for example, you don't give them 5% at all. And then for every week it was delayed, you do 10% for the equivalent amount of weeks afterwards. But still, that's really weird. That's really convoluted. Um, I don't think these three are the solution, but I like that people are having a discussion about it because they're clearly passionate about it. They want to talk about it. Um, and it's good to get ideas out on the table. And I appreciate that. The next thing is Battle Cries one where he basically said he wanted to delay the Alluvium open beta launch for Alluvium Zero. Now, personally... I would like to get an announcement of a launch date as soon as possible, okay? I want people, I want the game to be announced at least a month, a month and a half out. If it's getting pushed back for things like Alluvium Zero or there's a lot of uncertainty, then I fear the game's open beta launch date will be announced like two weeks prior, which would suck. I would not be able to take time off work. Maybe that's just a selfish bias reason for me, but I don't think it would be good for the general populace all right that being said maybe you push out open beta one month and then announce it right now and everything's solved i don't mind at all all i know is the game has been delayed and delayed and delayed so many times in my opinion they do not have the room to delay again okay that's personal opinion but the faith has er eroded from all of these delays and they've run out of chances. I don't think, if you think outside of even our current community, it's the external communities. All they see is delay, 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 delay. The game is never coming out. And I see that all the time on Twitter, my YouTube comments, all the rest of it. I see those comments all the time. I'm telling you, outside of this bubble, people don't take Alluvium all that seriously sometimes because of all the delays. And to be honest, there are lots of games I don't take seriously because of all the delays. Um, they've been better lately and illusion has been better lately too, but you only get so many delays in your, in your budget until you run out of time. And Alluvium knows that delaying for Alluvium zero would be rough. I understand it might be okay. It might be an okay decision. I would rather get an unfinished version of Alluvium zero to public, something that's good enough to play than delay open beta, if anything else. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Uh, one more delay won't hurt. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. I think it will hurt, but that's just me. Anyways, I appreciate you all stopping by. We had so many viewers today. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to comment on the video after it's done. Let me know what you think about the delays. Let me know what you think about Alluvium Zero coming out later. And tell me if you want to get into the testnet beta and how badly you want to get into it. Maybe tell me a reason you really want to play the testnet beta and maybe that will help Alluvium recognize that you're fit for it and you can jump in. Have a good day.